Hey everybody, this is Hercules Pedics, founder, curator, docent, and gift shop employee of the Hercules Pedics Academy of Comic Book Studies. Today we're going to be looking at He He, a 1970 underground published by Company and Sons. It's an anthology, and uh, this is an example of uh, a handful of undergrounds I have in the Academy collection where they're not the best comics, I'll be honest. There's some pretty crappy comics in here. There's some really decent stuff, though. But it's basically just because it's an artifact from the underground era. And most of these artists are probably, you know, tripping balls and high on reefer when they made these comics. And, uh, you know, sometimes every now and then it bears good fruit and sometimes it bears shitty fruit. But it's fascinating seeing, you know, these crazy comics. Uh, just guys making comics art for art's sake, you know? And I just love these comics anyway, <laughs> regardless of uh, the actual quality of the, the cartooning and such and stories. Um, this does have some decent stuff in it, though, starting off with a Larry Rippey cover, uh, semi-ubiquitous contributor to many underground comic anthologies. Uh, pretty decent. And it uh, definitely puts the work in. Lots of nice shading. We have an inside front cover here by Hector Tellez. He uh, did a bunch of comics uh, undergrounds in the 70s and seemed to like to kind of drift away by like 78 or so. Uh, the end of dope. And this hippie's looking for the last little seeds and stems he can find. So the first uh, story is uh, Dr. Spiderwart's Machine by Larry Rippey. And uh, the scientist is... Uh, he developed this wave machine that makes a portal into another dimension. And he gets this guy to be his guinea pig and go through the portal and gives him a camera so he can take pictures of what he sees. So this is like some pretty nice cartooning. I like this crazy sinuous tree. It's like a tree house. And uh, lots of kind of trippy art. There's some, some pointillism. It's definitely doing some interesting shading. So this guy goes through the portal. It kind of looks like a vagina. And taking pictures of all the crazy flora and fauna he sees. Pretty crazy tree there. I like that. And he meets the denizens of this uh, dimension. And they're not good. It seems like everyone in this dimension is like kind of murderous and evil and depraved and there's dead bodies people being tortured it's like a really it's not a good dimension he kind of befriends this guy or at least this guy's walking around with him in a straight jacket a pretty scary looking dude almost looks like a zombie and uh, all of a sudden his camera is jerked out of his hands and this ogre guy just crushes it and then gra grabs him and hauls him off, throws him in a dungeon. He throws in the 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 guy in the straight jacket too, so they're the jail cell together. And uh, he tells them that he's the commanding general of all the armies in the cosmos. You know, he sounds like he's just a ranting nut, but he actually just when he tells the guards, "Hey, let us out of here. This guy wants to leave." They let him out, so apparently he's not that crazy. Oops, I jumped ahead on too many pages. So then they get attacked by this huge army is coming at him with all these various weapons. And uh, the guy from Earth is like, I'm getting out of here. I kind of like this panel, trippy hit panel of him coming back through the portal. And he tells the scientist what he saw. And he's, you know, basically this dimension is horrible. And the scientist says, okay, I'll, I'll dismantle this machine. I, I don't want to have a bridge between their world and ours. And uh, he goes to take him to the doctor. And for some reason, <laughs> he leaves the portal on. And, uh, the last panel, an ominous note, one of the denizens of that evil dimension is popping his arm through with a knife. And he's like saying, 
say, hey, what's this? So kind of like an EC type science fiction comic thing going on. Here we have God Forbidden Planet by Hector Tellez. This is just these aliens give a switch that will blow up the whole earth. They give it to this blind guy and they say, don't flip the switch. And they're basically relying on human nature. They figure if they give someone on earth the switch and tell them not to flip it, they'll do it because that's human nature, you know? But this blind guy just throws it in the river and the threat to the world was no more. So the guy whose planet was they all, the other aliens are about to kick his ass. Pretty goofy. But I kind of like Hector, Hector Tellers as a raw style. If he was a better writer, I think it would be a really great style for like a funny strip. Like it, it looks kind of funny, the art. And, uh, and he definitely uh, puts in the detail, puts in the work. So I'd like to see more of Hector tell us how he developed. I uh, never seen him before. Though apparently he's in some Dr. Wortham's comics and stories in like the late 70s. The Necker Cube by D. Engstead. This is a story about uh, the big boss, it's God. And he calls up Sam Aiton, who's Satan obviously. And they're like, hey, let's play the game of life. And they look at the world. And, you know, they they build it up. You know, cities and everything. And, you know, they make humans too. And so they go off to collect the members of the game. So this guy's pretty interesting cartooning. It looks like he... Uh, I'd really like to see how this guy developed. Because... Uh, this could be turned into a really good style. It's not bad. Very, very cartoony. But everyone got in Satan meat are just like horrible. Like this guy's a speed freak. He's just rambling <laughs> to a wall. This guy's pissing in a fountain. And he's just like, fuck off. So they can't find anyone to play the game of life. And Satan says, maybe they just want to live life. And God says, wow, we gave a world and nobody came. Satan says, shut up and take a hit of this joint. Here we have a very interesting uh, strip. It's Tom and Rick Veitch. Tales to drive you insane from the long hidden book of Crazy Mouse. These were made when Tom, I'm sorry, Rick Veitch you know, he drew these. He was a teenager. He was, like, still in school when these were made. His brother, Tom, had already kind of, like, cracked the Bay Area underground hippie comic scene. So I assume he just was like, hey, you're pretty good, little brother. I'll see if we can get you into this underground. And, you know, it's, they're pretty dumb. They're pretty dopey. Because Tom Veitch is pretty young at this point. He's out of high school, I'm pretty sure, but... uh He's still pretty young. But we can see already with this crude cartooning that Rick Veitch has already got storytelling. He already gets it. Probably from growing up reading, you know, hundreds of pages, thousands of pages of Jack Kirby comics. Through osmosis or just from reading those, he very... It's better told than a lot of these hippie comics <laughs> where these guys don't even get the grammar of comic storytelling, you know? He seems to already have it. These are just very silly. I don't really want to get into them too deep, in too much detail. But it's nice to see a young Rick Veitch. It's interesting. Here we have Bucket Carrier for the Emperor by Leonard Reifus, the kind of educational comics guru. He went on to start that Edu Comics. That did a lot of, almost all the comics he did were like educational type. And this is just this cute little Mickey Mouse knockoff guys carrying water. Tries to go to, into a strip club and they kick him out. So then he just gets his water and goes home. It's, uh, it's I think, the best thing I've seen by Leonard Reifus. That's not high praise. The guy can't draw very well, Leonard Reifus. But, he, you know, it's he's not drawing humans here. So I think he draws this funny animal character pretty well. And I kind of like, you know, don't mind the cartooning. It's 
pretty good. He should have stuck with this style. Another Hector Tellez story, Voyage to See What's on the Bottom of the Toilet Bowl. I like this opening gag where it says a spaceship is drifting. Suddenly it's caught in the gravitational pull of the sun. That's a good beginning. Too bad it's, it's got nothing to do with the story. <laughs> So uh, these two generals are like, come, let me show you what we've done. Do tell. And they open this door and they saw, and they see all this amazing science fiction vistas. It's a weird alien chomping on these seeds. And then we realize it's all, all of this is just what this guy's reading in his science fiction pulp and he's on the toilet and he, he just says I beg your pardon it's a very odd strip this one's called Constant Karma by Roger Wade Boyce this one pager here and uh, we see this woman and this guy has invented a machine that can steal people's karma and she, so he steals her karma <laughs> and the way it operates is almost like she farts out her com karma into this machine. And uh, it says back at the lab, 50,000 megawatts of unearned good karma drained from the savage girl into the professor. So the girl joins her ancestors. She lacks the spiritual glue after losing all of her karma. She can't uh, maintain her physical existence. And the other one, I assume talking about the professor, because I don't really get this ending, is uh, when you drink a bit of instant karma, you must take the bad with the good. Sorry, professor. And it looks like this is the woman. So I don't get how the karma works here. And this guy's ripping her eyeball out in a graveyard. So I don't know. Once again, this guy was probably doing drugs. Also see like, who knows, this guy could have become really good in five years, kept kept at it. I don't know. I don't know if he did keep at it. Don't know much about that guy. Here we have a center spread by Larry Rippey. And this is like Larry Rippey, obviously. He took some drugs before writing the strip. It's... It's pretty, some really nice psychedelic art. I love that panel. But it's off, you can tell. <laughs> it's very lysergic. The panels are dripping here. He just gets rid of the panels altogether and just draws these crazy drawings. I kind of like this as uh, Earth with like a, a po-faced North America. And then we just see the skeleton of that weird earth. Pretty nice stuff. See, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I just love this kind of hippie, drug-addled, psychedelic shit. Just because you're not going to see anything like it anywhere else. Here we have uh, another Crazy Mouse. The power of Crazy Mouse. And... Uh, Russia and America are like, what are we going to do about Crazy Mouse? He's a gaiju-sized creature now. I'm sure Rick Veitch was uh, inspired by all the Jack Kirby monster comics he read in the late 50s, early 60s. And they're shooting missiles at it. Nothing's working. So here we have a, a long story by Casey. And... Uh, this is pretty bad. You can see the art itself. It's pretty rudimentary. I mean, I, I could draw this. <laughs> I'm terrible. This is uh, not very good. But, you know, God bless his heart for trying. You know, he made a comic. He did it, at least. This is the problem. No marijuana. So, apparently, there's a pot drought in the Bay Area. Nobody can score. So these hippies, these enterprising hippies, buy a big bus, a hippie bus, and uh, they head down to Mexico. This is just a very odd page. I got the shading on these. I think he's trying to make it look like, you know, 
canyon walls, but it looks like leopard prints. <laughs> it looks like a like a the mother unmarried with children, her her hot pants, or whatever you call those. So they head down to Mexico. And uh Yeah, and the writing's just as bad as the art. It's just these hippies constantly be like, hey man, you wanna join? Sure, light me up. Pretty insipid. They get the pot, but then they gotta head back to America and they gotta deal with the border. And they haven't really even thought, don't have a plan, but one of the hippies is like, I'll come up with something. So they reach the border and the border guards come out and they're just salivating. They're like, ooh, a hippie van. We're definitely gonna make some busts today. Look at that guy. He's just, looks like he's looking at a naked lady or something. He's so excited. So they can't find anything though. All that pot they bought, there's no sign of it. The cop asks at one point, he says, who's that? And we see this guy in a poncho kneeling down. And he says, oh, that's Jim. He's in a yoga trance. He'll be that way for hours. So the cops are like, okay. So they pull away and the, the coast is clear. And it turns out that Jim is just a fake head on this blanket. And that's where all the pot was hiding. That's how they got it across the border. Oh man. And then we see the Bay Area, everyone's smoking pot and happy. The drought is over because these guys. And it's weird, we have a little cameo from Trash Man, Spain's Trash Man. And he says, you know, this trip is even loonier than mine, but anybody who smokes dope like this can't be all bad. Eey. That's pretty, some crappy stuff. This is like a, if the fabulous Fury Freak Brothers like ate a retard sandwich and uh, smeared themselves with shit. That's my poetic uh, description of what this comic is. It's just a bunch of hippies trying to get pot. Gilbert Shelton could make that fun and interesting, but this guy can't. Another crazy mouse. It already looks like Rick Veitch is getting better. <laughs> the third little strip, probably drawn the same week as the other ones. So we see crazy gaiju, crazy mouse. They're shooting missiles at him. Now things get really odd. His head turns into all these tentacles which grab the missiles out of the air. And then we see all the world leaders, their thought balloons, thinking about dropping the hydrogen bomb on Crazy Mouse. We see this guy's word balloon. He's kind of like the dastardly villain behind everything. And his word balloon starts chomping on the world leader's word balloon and devours it and then goes off, drooling. And then this character is, has a word balloon of Richard Nixon saying, it is my sad duty to inform you that our war effort in Vietnam has terminated. <laughs> so I guess young Rick Veitch and Tom Veitch were already dabbling with drugs. <laughs> this is it's just craziness. I like this page of Psychedelia. This is Al Devoren. It's called Slumber. And uh, this is some really nice Psychedelia. You know, no rhyme or reason, just art for art's sake. It's really nice stuff. Al Devoren, uh, he was one of the co-editors of that Promethean Enterprises, that great underground fanzine, or fanzine underground. Um, did a lot of good stuff. And he's in many, uh, a bunch of undergrounds. I don't have much of his stuff, though, because I really like it. I would like to see more. Once again, Hector Tellez comes back. The Man Who Bites. And uh, I think he came back extra stoned on this trip. Because this one is just... It's just very silly and odd. I like this trippy panel where his face is made up of all these objects. His nose is a peanut... His eyeglass frames are like hanging frames. His eyes look like coins, his pupils. Very odd. Yeah, this is just a, whatever, a bad trip. Illustrated. 
I can make neither heads nor tails. But it's kind of fun because you have no idea what the hell's gonna happen. It's better than being predictable. This is so weird. This guy's hitchhiking. And this guy says, jump in. And there's like a legless man sitting. Shotgun. Oh, armless too. I don't know. <laughs> Craziness. Here we have an inside back cover by Roger Wade Boyce. And uh, this is just nutty. You can just tell by the sloppiness of the art. I think he was really tripping hard on this. Is this this rich old lady dies and she bequeaths all of her money to her poodle and the poodle takes all the money and has this decadent life taking drugs going to Disneyland and having a shady hanging around with shady characters and uh has a companion and then this uh narrator says and just like you probably already guessed they died and went to hell ha 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 and you're supposed to color this, I guess, as a coloring guide of various shades of gray and black. Nuts. And I kind of like this psychedel little psychedelic piece by Rick Sloan, obviously inspired by, you know, Rick Griffin and Victor Moscosco, those guys. And uh, it's kind of nice. I kind of like it. So there you have it. He, he. Um, maybe not exceptional, but an interesting underground from 1970. And, uh, you know, most of the undergrounds I show off on the show are pretty damn good. But I've got a handful of these comics where I think if they weren't, uh, as drenched in drugs, I probably wouldn't have kept them. But because of their craziness of the stories, I just kind of like them because they're just nuts. They're, they're like nothing else. It's like we're seeing into some hippie's id. And it's spilling out on paper. But there you have it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you next time here at the Hercules Pedics Academy of Comic Book Studies.